What made me want to be a trainer was my mother. My mother was a trainer of horses and also a trainer of people. She specifically worked with people with no arms, no legs, autism, learning disability. She utilized horses to help people get engaged mentally or engaged physically back with the world. I do the same thing that my mother did, I just do it in a different way. I utilize the ideas of self-protection, the ability to be violent when necessary if threatened, and aerial arts and physical strength and physical fitness and movement in order to unlock people's potential within themselves. Most people, when they seek out training, want to change who they are. And the first thing that they think of is to try to change the way that they look. We take a different approach. By teaching people a skill, we will change them mentally, physically, and emotionally into that thing that they are training for. I predominantly use a one-on-one -on -one training method for the simple reason that it allows me to focus exactly on what an athlete needs when they need to focus on it. But when you're in a group, you can't really do that. You have to train either for the lowest end or the highest end of the spectrum, and somebody's always getting lost in the middle. A lot of the things that I do can be considered dangerous, but they are really a practice in being bold every day. Doing something that terrifies you just a little bit will slowly change you over time. I myself am terrified of heights, in all ironic comedy, right? I'm terrified of heights, so I train aerial, because exposure a little bit every day over time changes the way you view the world. Slowing it down and starting over with something like a machete is reinstituting the idea of danger into training. If you can listen to your iPod or talk on your phone while you're training, you're not actually training. If somebody's swinging a machete at your head, you really should be mentally present. Every day. I will be seeking out forms of training for myself. I enjoy learning. It's the most enjoyable thing that I do on a daily basis is seek out new knowledge, consume that knowledge, and then attempt to integrate that knowledge into the way that I think. We do a lot of these things because they're things that the human body is designed to do. Bodybuilding is not something that ever existed in history until you know 40, 50 years ago. Whereas aerial has existed in many forms all the way throughout history as an ideal way to move the body for real. Whether it be Chinese pole going all the way back to people climbing bamboo poles or various versions of old school rope yoga. So I want to side first. Okay. Okay. Side first, then roll open. Now reach up. Boom. That is the line I want. That's the one that's When I wake up in the morning, I look forward to working with creative people who want to be involved, who are self-motivated and driven. I enjoy the process of training when people start to create their own movement styles. 
If you don't limit people to doing things in an exact order or in an exact way, people will tend towards the type of movement that they enjoy most. People's personality will kind of boil out from the training. And seeing people create their own version of something is rewarding. Good training should encourage good biomechanical alignment. It doesn't matter if it's doing aerial training, doing club bell training, doing fight training, training with weapons. Everything should end up being pretty.